Today we are talking about what is called the volume of solids with known cross-sections. But before we start the notes, I want to take a little detour. You don't need to write this down, you just need to watch. Because I am not an artist and don't claim to be, please bear with me. This is my failed attempt to draw what shape? A cylinder. <laughs> no, it's not that failed. Okay. Who knows the formula for the volume of a cylinder? Based on height. Area of a circle times height. Area of a circle times the height, exactly. Okay. Now some teachers teach it big B times H. Okay. Because a cylinder is just a stack of tiny, thin circles all on top of each other, agreed? Like poker chips or like like communion wafers or something like that that are really thin that you stack them all up and it makes a cylinder. Agreed? Like what? Like Girl Scout cookies. Girl very Scout good. CDs. CDs is, yeah, that's actually a very good example. Okay. Okay. My stick of butter. Yeah. Okay. What's the volume of this? Okay, what kind of shape is this called? Prism. Rectangular prism. What is its volume? Length width times, times, times height. Width times length times height, which is the same thing as the other one. Agreed? Area the base times the height, because the base is the wing, the wing, the wing times the width. <laughs> no, the length times the width. I've had so much trouble talking today. Okay, so. Basically, it's a stack of papers or a stack of items, each one's area times the height. Okay. Today, we're going to be talking about finding the volume of unusual shapes, shapes that you probably have, will have trouble mentally picturing until we actually draw them on the computer. One thing you will know about these shapes is the cross section. So, I've got a few visual aids here, box of nerds, okay? Yum, yum, yum. Now, okay, if I were to slice this thing this way, what sh if that was a solid object, if I were to slice it going through this way, what shape would each slice be? It's a rectangle, isn't it? It would look like that. Agreed? Okay. I've got little mini gobstoppers right here. I'm just picking up what I've got handy that are spheres. If you slice a sphere, this way through the sphere, this way through the sphere, up and down. What shape will you see? You'll see a circle, won't you? Just Will they all be the same size? No. They'll be the same shape but not the same size. Okay. So, we're going to be talking about shapes or of objects that have a specific shaped base, in this case circular, and then if you slice down towards the circle, you're always going to get the same shape slice either a square, an equilateral triangle, etc. We're going to talk about how to find the volume of those things. Okay, The volume of, no, of a solid with a known cross-section is given by these two formulas, the integral from A to B of A of X dx or the integral from C to D of A of Y dy. These two formulas is the area of one slice. So basically, you've got to know what shape the slice is and they will tell you and you're going to put into that formula the area of one of those slices. And then it says where A of X and A of Y represent the area of each cross section perpendicular to the X axis and Y axis respectively. That's a lot of words, so let's make that a little more simple. Okay, what is that symbol I just drew right there? Perpendicular. perpendicular. If you're perpendicular to the X axis, it will be a DX integral. If you are perpendicular to the Y axis, it will be a dy integral. Okay, So you have to read the problem. It will tell you which axis you're perpendicular to, which will then tell you how you have to set up your problem, either with a dx or a dy. Okay. Now, the next directions are very wordy. And it's something that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless you have a picture. So I'm going to bring a picture into it and show you what it looks like. Find the volume of a solid whose base is bounded by the circle x squared plus y squared equals 25. Where's the center of this circle? 
the origin, okay? And what is its radius? Five. The indicated cross sections are taken perpendicular to the x axis. So, what did I just tell you the integral has to be? dx. So, I'm going to write a dx right there to remind myself. Okay? So, we're going to have an object with a circular base so that when you slice through the object, every slice is a square. That's what it says right here. Now, this is rather hard to visualize, especially if you don't see things in 3D very well, and I'm one of those people who does not. So, what I have here is a computer program that will allow you, as soon as it lightens up, come on. Do you see the square sitting right here? Okay, this circle has a radius of four, I mean a radius of two. It tells you it's a different circle, but you got the same idea, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is move this across and see how the squares change, okay? Here's a bird's eye view right here. Here's the, the side view as you go. Now, are all, are all the squares the same size as you move across? No. Okay, now, so that's what it's going to look like. Do you think you know what it looks like as one big object? I have trouble seeing it, but this thing will generate that object for you. Watch this. Isn't that cool? Very cool. And then I can even take this and rotate it. Let me get rid of the edges. Yes, I can. I just did. I push the special button. Okay. This program that does this is available on my website. If you go to my website and down the left-hand column, find the button that says Resources, and under Resources, look for cross-sections, and it'll, you can, it'll take you directly to the site so that you can play with it. Okay? So, now you kind of have an idea what it looks like, but honestly, in reality, you don't need to know what it looks like in order to do the problem, because when I was in high school, we didn't have this computer software. We ended up building some models to do this, and it, was, it took an extra day to do all the work. But I'm going to set it back to where it was, so let's reset right there. Okay. Now, I need you to think for a minute where the square is in relation to the circle. You can either look at this right here or this right here. I think I know why it's darker is because I started recording. I didn't record last period. That's probably what the issue is. Okay. Now, what is the formula for the area of a square? Well, a little more simplest. Even simpler than that. Side squared. Let's go that simple. Side squared. Okay? Do you notice that the side is sitting on the circle and touching the circle from end to end? Okay? Now, so is the, is the side of the circle going in an X direction or a Y direction? It's going in a Y direction. It's going up and down. Do you agree with me? Okay. Now, how long is the side of the square? Is it four all the time? No. It's four if I move the square right here. It's four right there. But then it shrinks and gets smaller. But it always has a relationship to the side of the circle. Does anybody have an idea of what it is? It's a variable because it changes. Not, okay, dx is actually the width of the square. So you're very close. How long is it from here up? Isn't it the y value of the circle? Think about it. Isn't it the y value of the circle? Now, how long is it from here down? Distance wise, it's a y value. So, how long is this right here? It's 2y. Do you see that that is 2y? And that's very important for solving this problem. It is the length of this half of the base of the square is equal to the y value of the circle at that point. Let me say that one more time. The length of this half of the side of the square is equal to the y value at that point. And even if I move this over, the length of half of that bottom of the square is still the y value at that point that it is. Right? Okay. So, what I need you to write down when you do this is to draw the picture and label the side that you know. This We said that the side that's sitting on the circle is 2y. So. Now we write the formula for the area of a square, which we said was S squared. 
and so the length of the side is 2y. So now when we set up the integral, it's going to have to be a dx. Do you agree with me? Because we said it was perpendicular to the x-axis, has to be dx. Yes, Chris? You mean this? I don't know. On the paper. On the paper. Okay. Do you see? Does everybody understand where I got everything from? Barrett? How do you take an integral of something that's not changing? Because if the x isn't changing, it's only the y. I'll show you in a minute. We're getting there. Okay. But I need to ask you a question right now. Because this is a dx problem, my limits of integration have to be x values. And basically, they are the x coordinate where the squares start and the x coordinate where they stop. Now this one is negative 2 to positive 2 because it's a smaller circle. What will ours be? Negative 5, negative five, to, five. Negative five to 5 because it's going at a set circle with a radius of 5. So this will go from negative 5 to positive 5. Okay, And then here goes the area formula substituting in what s is. So this will be 2y the quantity squared dx. Do you understand how I got that? Anybody have a question? Please ask now. Okay. But you know what? I've got a problem. If this says dx, this has to be an x right here. It cannot be a y. So what I'm going to do first is multiply it out, make it 4y squared dx. And now I need to do something and change this y squared to an x of some kind. Does anybody have a guess as to what I'm going to use? The the equ which one? The original. Isn't the y based on the circle? Isn't it the y value of the circle? Yes. So we're going to take this circle equation, y, excuse me, x squared plus y squared equals 25. And since I just need to know what y squared is, I'm not going to go all the way to y. I'm just going to solve for y squared. What is y squared? 25 minus x squared. What did I tell you you can do with constants in an interval? Pull them out. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull the 4 out, go from negative 5 to 5, and do the integral of 25 minus x squared dx. And now take your calculator and go ahead and type that in. So 4 math 9, negative 5 to 5 of 25 minus x squared dx. Now, you can either put the 4 in the front of the integral or you can do the integral first and then multiply your answer by 4. It is the evil number or 6666. Which I'm going to make into a fraction because I don't like to write the evil number down. It is 2,000 over 3. Okay, so that is the volume of that shape that I built on the computer. How is it the volume when you use the area? Because an integral accumulates area. Okay? So basically we're saying the area of one slice, of all the slices from negative 5 to 5, that's what the integral does. It accumulates all the areas together. It's like the height. Okay? Or think of it this way. Area of the base times the height. That works too. All right. I am going to stop. Are there any questions on this problem right here? Are we Okay, what is that volume? That volume that I built of that solid, that's what the volume is. Okay. That's what we just found. And this is the accumulation of all the squares added together, because that's the area of one square, okay. and the negative 5 to 5 adds up all the squares. Okay? All right. Equilateral triangles. So let's take a look at that one. Let me pull the computer over. Much better picture we can now see. I'm going to change this to, if it'll let me change, equilateral triangles. Starting on the far side, I'm going backwards. See the triangles? See how they're sitting there? Getting bigger and then getting smaller. Can you picture what that's going to look like as a solid? Yes. This is a cone. Yeah. Kind of a cone, but watch this. Here we go. No. 
Here we go. Mm, it's not quite a cone. Let's hide the cross section. Let's show the edges. Now, that's not really obvious to check, to see. Let's talk about rotating a little bit. It kind of looks like a tent. I could, yes, that that's a good that's a good. But it's it's round. It's circular on the bottom. On the side, it looks like a fingernail, but not on the bottom. Unless you got really fat fingers. Okay. All right. Let's reset. This computer program is acting a little stupid, so I have to change the circ. I have to change, and then change back. Okay. Now, look at our triangle where it is right here. What part of the triangle is sitting on the circle? The bottom, the base. How long is the base? It is 2y. Okay, so keep that in mind. I'm going to pull this aside again. Go back to the paper, bless you. Yeah, it really doesn't. If it's equilateral, it really doesn't matter which one the base is. So draw a triangle, equilateral, label the base as 2y. Nope, it's not. Okay, how tall is it? Does it change as the triangles move across the circle? Yeah, yeah. Yes, definitely. It's not a constant, okay? But is it y? Is it 2y? We don't know. But because that is a right angle, we might be able to figure it out. So equilateral means what? 60 degrees. 60 degrees, all the sides are the same. This is also bisected, so this is y and this is y. What other side of a triangle do I know? Hypotenuse, Hypotenuse is how long? 2y. So can you find the height now using the Pythagorean theorem? I hope you can. So here we go. Wait, why is that y? You, if you know your special tri triangle rules, yes, you can. You get it? OK. Does everybody, understand, everybody else understand why these are both y? Because it bisects the side. OK. So we can call that h. So you can say h squared plus y squared equals 4y squared. Or if you know your special right triangles, you can do this a lot quicker. h squared equals 3y squared. So h equals the square root of 3y squared. I know it's positive because it's a height. Can I pull the y out of that radical? Yeah. Am I allowed to do that? Yeah. Yes, you are. So h equals y square root of 3. OK. So every time you draw the shape, write its formula down for its area. Area of a triangle is what? Just this One generic formula. Half base One half base times height. Don't worry about plugging values in yet. Just write the formula down. One half base times height. How long did we say the full base is? The full base is 2y of the whole triangle. Don't say y because it's the base of the little one. The height we got as y square roots of 3. OK. So are the limits of integration going to be the same for this problem? Why are they going to be the same? The circle is still the same base. It's still the same circle because it's talking about where in the circle am I going? From negative 5 to 5. Now we put in the formula for the area, 1 half the base, 2y, and the height, y square root of 3, dx. Yeah, we're going to. OK, once again, I've got the wrong variable in there. So I'm going to clean it up a little bit. The half and the 2 cancel. The square root of 3 can come out. So we're going to have 3 integral from negative 5 to 5 of y squared dx. So this will be square root of 3, negative 5 to 5, 25 minus x squared dx. And now you can plug that in the calculator. Which one? I have a y right here and a y right there. So calculator. We're going to use radical 3, get out of there, math 9, negative 5 to 5, 25 minus x squared dx. Whoops, whoa. 
There we go. We get 288.675 cubic units. It does not make a fraction because the oh, you can't see that very well at all, can you? Boy, now the calculator's dark. Let's try this. That doesn't help either. Well, that just stinks. I can't make anything right in this. Hey, do me a favor, Tyler. Turn the lights back on. Let's see if this does it. Give it a minute. Whoa, give it a minute. Adjust, adjust. Come on, you can adjust. Maybe not. It's recording. It's recording. It will not adjust. Go ahead and turn it back off again. <laughs> Sorry. I tried. It doesn't work. You can still see it. Next period, what I'll do is I know about the light adjustment. I'll re-record third period. I'll have the lights on and make sure it's adjusted properly before I start it and have the lamp on too. Okay, questions? Okay. Moving on to the next one, semicircles. I have a feeling that 99%, if not all of you, can visualize what this is going to look like. Semicircles. Moving down. Tilt it up just a little bit. A semi-sphere. It's going to go wee like this. And it's going to turn into a... Look like an igloo for a second there. Show cross-section, turn that off. It's a sphere. Turn that off. It is a dome. It's a dome. It's a sphere. What's the What's the correct word? It's not a semi-sphere. What's it called? A hemisphere, like in geography. A hemisphere. Okay. Now, so we're going to use calculus, not geometry, to find the volume of this right here. Okay. Let me go back. What part of the semicircle is sitting on the circle? The diameter. The diameter is. Okay. So when we draw this semicircle, the diameter is 2y. Mm, not exactly. Okay. First of all, it's one half pi r squared for the area of a semicircle. Okay. If the diameter is 2y, what's the radius? Y. Y, because it's y. It's like who's on first, what's on second. Exactly. Okay. You write the integral. You write the integral right now. See if you can write the integral down. And change it to X's and all that good stuff. I think you can do the whole thing. Yes, leave your answer in terms of pi, please. Or your integral. When you put it in the calculator, it'll get rid of the pi. We have one in a minute that's not going to be that way. Most of them in this case are, but not always. Okay. Yes. Question? Got it? Okay. Anybody have a question? We are cooking right along and doing great on time. We're cooking with gas. Cooking with gas. I would say cooking with Crisco. 
So that's good. All right. Isosceles, right triangles. What does isosceles mean again? Two sides congruent with one leg as the base. Okay, it's an isosceles right triangle. And one of the legs is the base. So these two legs have to be congruent. And one leg is the base. So let's put this one together. Okay, here it is. We teeny tiny triangle, big triangle, teeny tiny triangle. It could be, but this one they decided they wanted it on the base. It's easier to find the area, actually. Okay, here's the solid. Here it comes. Okay. What does this look like? Okay. To me, this looks like the top of a tube of lipstick. Do you see that? Yeah. Girls? Guys are like, whatever. <laughs> I need to come up with a guy analogy. I don't know what this looks like. It's Because it's flat on one side. Kind of looks like two Pringles chips put together. Yeah, like a duckbill Pringle chip. I can see that. I can see that kind of. All right. I don't know why this thing refuses to change back until it's do so right here. Okay. So, let's move this little guy over to the center someplace there. Okay. The part that is sitting on the circle, how long is it? 2Y. Okay. Okay. So, this is 2y, height is also 2y, the area is one half the base times the height, which is one half of, oops, I went ahead and did this differently than the last one, let me do it this way. The base is 2y and the height is 2y. So, you should be able to set this one up and do it yourself as well. So one half two y the quantity squared dx. So this is integral from negative five to five. Half of four is two y squared dx. Move out the two. You don't have to move the two out. I just like to. That's my own personal preference. So, 2, math 9, negative 5 to 5, 25 minus x squared. I said squared. I always defaults back to the beginning. The x, 333.33333, math enter, enter. Thousand over three cubic units. Okay. We have one more we have to do before we pack up. It's on the back because it has a brand new formula you've never seen before. Okay. This is something that's not taught in geometry and it needs to be. The formula for finding the area. Okay. In this case, we're talking about semi-ellipses, and we're just going to do this without the computer to save time. An ellipse is longer than it is wide or wider than it is long. Okay, It is defined by its center. The distance from the center horizontally is called A. The distance from the center vertically is called B. That's what you learned when you did conics in Algebra 2. Okay. The formula for the area of a semi-ellipse is one half pi a b. Okay? 
If A and B were the same length, how would it be different? It would be a circle, right? And what's the formula for a circle? One half pi r r, or r squared. So it's just a times b times pi divided by two. Okay. Now, if we did semi ellipses, the distance from here to here would be the two y. Agreed. So, how long is a? It is y. And b is 3 because it says height 3 and height is b. So it's always going to be 3 units high. I really can't do this one on a computer because the computer always has the values changing constantly. Okay? So now when we set this one up it's still negative 5 to 5. 1 half pi times y dx. And for the first time we do not have a y squared in here. We have a y. So let's talk about how we're going to do this. We're going to pull out 3 halves pi, negative 5 to 5 of y dx. All that's left in there is the y. It's just root of right, it is going to be the square root of 25 minus x squared. Since y squared equaled 25 minus x squared, y equals the square root of 25 minus x squared. We always use the positive square root because these semi-ellipses are always above the circle. They're on top of it. Okay, so when we type this in, 3 halves pi, negative 5 to 5, radical 25 minus x squared dx, and this cannot be done without a calculator because it's a u substitution and it's missing its du. And the answer happens to be 185.055 cubic units. Okay, that, what I taught you today should get you through the first four problems on this worksheet. I will teach you how to do the rest of them tomorrow, and we will finish this up. I will put this video up separately.